you would think all of this is hard to learn, right? But let me tell you one thing. Spline made it easy. So easy that you could do it right from your browser, your MacBook, Windows or Linux. Oh, do you also know that it comes with a free plan? Thank you Spline for sponsoring this video. If you haven't heard of Spline yet, Spline is a design and collaboration tool for 3D experiences on the web. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through Spline's features, what you can achieve with Spline and whether is it right for you. Now head on over to spline.design and go to download. I will use the M1 Mac OS version right here. So once you're in Spline, just go to library. You'll see all these free templates for you to use. Everything here in the library can be used for commercial purposes. In this library, you can find objects or scenes. Some are animated as well. One of the cool thing about Spline is that you can create exciting 3D animations with interactions. Once you click on a template, wait for it to load and it will create a new file in your library. Everything is auto saved, so don't worry. Head on to this top bar, click on play. You can preview how it looks like. Click and drag to see how it looks like in different directions. So you have three things here on the interface in Spline. On the left, this is a sidebar where you can see all your layers. There's a toolbar on top and also on the right sidebar, this is where all the settings are. So if I have nothing selected, you can see I can toggle global settings, the frame, the camera, I can add fog, you know, I can even do different things here. So when we preview our animation, you can see that, you know, this ball becomes bigger and smaller. So as you can see, as a toggle between these states, it has different positioning and different sizes. On the base state, the ball is in this size and it was set to an event type of start, which means that every time this animation is previewed, it will automatically animate on start time. If I set this to something else, let's say mouse hover, the sphere will only animate when I hover on it with my mouse, as you can see here. If I set it to follow, the sphere follows my mouse cursor. For example, if I select on this item here and select look at this object will look at my cursor no matter where I go to. You can also toggle settings like cycle, rewind and repeat and it's just basically different transitions will give you different settings as for the duration, delay, so on and so forth. The third awesome thing about Spline is that you can play around with 3D modeling and 3D sculpting. You can basically create shapes that are more advanced and complex and have more control over what sort of shape do you want to create. And this is an example which you can find in the template library. Once you've created a shape, go to smooth and edit and your object will now be converted into something we call the subdivision surface. If you increase the base subdivision, it will give you a smoother sculpting result. So on the top of your toolbar, there's a brush and this is the sculpting brush where you can hover over it and see what it does. So you have grab, draw, draw clay and smooth. You can just grab in something and just pull it and you could actually change the radius and the strength of the sculpt brush. And you can dive deeper into what each brush does all in the spline documents. So now I exit the sculpt mode. Besides the sculpt brush, there's also six different things here that you can play around with. I think another useful thing that you can do in spline is showing your own app mockups in a 3D phone or a website mockup in the laptop itself. In the library, I'll just click on products, select any of these mockups here that I find interesting. Click on it and a new file will be created. Let me just show you how you can quickly show your mockup on this 3D phone. Go to Figma, make it double the resolution and I'll just export it. Keep clicking until I select the screen layer. So in the second image layer, I'm going to upload my image. A friendly reminder is that when you import your phone mockup, set the scale to one to one. If it doesn't look right, just adjust until it looks right. So users can also zoom in and out to preview your 3D scene. And it's already done. It's so easy. Now you can add animations or interactions into your scene. And I just want to make this sphere animate. So let's just try adding a state. As you can see, now you have a base state and a state. So I'll select the state, the second one, and I'll just pull this slightly up. I'll add events, turn cycle to yes, repeat to yes, and let's just set the duration to three seconds. The type will be, let's just say start. And let's say I want to make this phone interact with the user's cursor. I will add an event and let's just say look at. And basically, every time my cursor moves, the phone will look at my cursor. Whatever direction I turn, it will look at my cursor. Another cool thing you can do with Spline is 3D icons. 
So let's go to your library, go to 3D icons. So I'll just click on the Spotify icon. You can look under the hood on how this icon is created. If you only want to export one part of this icon, you can select this and you could just turn off everything else at the background. Change the background color to maybe white. Export, select as an image. It will look exactly like that. And let's say you are editing this file and you are lazy to go back to the library and add stuff. So just click on this library. Blind's template library has a lot of ready-made objects for you so that you don't have to learn how to create every 3D object from scratch. Double click on it, it will import this poop emoji and bam. So now you have this poop emoji right in your scene. You can drag it around. I can set events, make it look at my cursor and there you have it. If I want to change this poop into a different color, I can do that as well. Going to this poop material here, change the color, maybe just a pink one just to match with the brand here. You could change the lighting globally or add glass effects. So which means that this poop looks semi-translucent from my direction. See, it's kind of like that. It's a glass poop. <laughs> Whatever that you create on the first layer takes precedence over the next. So if I hide this glass layer into the back, you can see that the glass layer is no longer showing. The cool thing about Spline is also that you can now collaborate with your friends or your teammates. You can invite your friends to view or edit a file using a public link or inviting them via an email directly. As soon as a friend joins a file, you are able to see their pointers. The direction of the pointer shows you the position from where they are approaching the scene from. Now that you have an idea about what Spline can achieve and now you want to export and integrate your scene with different platforms. First, set up a frame that you want to have or you can just set a custom size. So let's say if I want a custom size for Twitter, I just click on export. You have the option to export as a public URL where you can send a URL to a friend to preview, right? You could embed an iframe code in Webflow or Notion or anywhere else that supports embedding iframes. I will disable zooming. I will disable page scroll. In future, when you want to update this 3D scene and it's already up live on a site or in Notion or whatever, just click on this update button after you've made the changes and it will automatically override everything else everywhere. So let's try and preview this URL on a browser. So everything is working as it should. You could even do frame recording. I will just set it to a GIF. Once I start recording it, I'll just move it around. I'll just try and move my cursor. Okay, stop. So I have recorded nine seconds right inside Spline. So your GIF is out and it looks like that. Everything is recorded. You can even change it to MP4 or different video settings as you pleased. If you would like to do something like Apple's AirPods Pro site, where when you scroll, there is some parallax motion going on, then exporting as an image sequence would be really helpful. Let's try and integrate it with Notion. Go to the export, copy this embed iframe code. Go into Notion, tap on forward slash. So go to embed, paste the link. So I will just drag to make this larger. And now you have a 3D scene right in Notion that is interactive and still follows your cursor. So as for Webflow, I'm on my Webflow site right now. Go to add, add an embedded component here. Paste the iframe link that I've just copied, save and close, set this height to let's say 600 pixels. Before you publish your live site, publish it to the staging link on Webflow and make sure that you have tested this on different screen sizes because the animation doesn't look centered in different screen sizes so make sure that it's fixed. So I've published my staging site and now you will have an interactive and animated 3D scene right in Webflow. I hope Spine is going to support more tools in the future. I'm really excited to see what is next for Spline. Feel free to join Spline's Discord community, share what you know, learn from other people who are also interested in 3D design using Spline, participate in different challenges, learn from other people, get inspiration, show off your work, or just get to know the community. If you want to know more about Spline, go to spline.design, click on docs. Everything here is beginner friendly and I've learned most of my knowledge here. If you would like to familiarize yourself with Spline, this is it. In order to learn fast, I always try to reverse engineer from the outcome. So using Spline's template library, I would just look at something that I'm really interested in, look into every layer and see how it's built. You could also organize your workspace with files and folders inside Spline itself. So you can just click on this to create a new folder. Everything is going to be more organized right now inside Spline itself.
Feel free to check them out on Twitter where they will share the latest updates about the spline tool and as well as how other people are creating cool things with spline itself. So if you like this video, I think you will like my other videos as well. 10 ways to earn side income for UI UX designers. How I built 8 different income streams in 6 months. Guide to becoming a UI UX designer. How I redesigned Espresso's website in 1 hour. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.